What time is it now? Okay. Ten o'clock, not bad. Ooh, of course. Ooh. <laughs> Good evening everyone. Good evening. Welcome to my study. Um, actually, I'm, I'm very happy to show you the background, the normal background, but actually the other side is particularly messy today. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh gosh, it's, you're just coming into the room. Well, not the room. Um, pretty fast. Janice, Hannah, Penny, Ronnie, Alison and John. Ronnie, Janice, Penny, Sharon. Hello Sharon. Hello everyone. Uh, Anne and Dave Jenner. Gosh, Amanda, Rebecca. Gosh, you're just pouring into this room. <laughs> oh, by the way, hey, hello, Mark. Um, I just remembered this because um, as I was telling you, oh, as I said, just, you're just pouring into this room because um, I pressed the button, you know, the um, um, the live stream, start the li um, you know the live start the video or something, and then suddenly for a couple of seconds, uh, it was very quiet. It was um, it was very quiet, but suddenly, just I could see. People just logged in, people just joined in, well, tuned in. Uh, what? What is? Gosh, I've lost my words. What is the best way? Yeah, suddenly I could see the people joining in. Yeah, you got that? Yeah. And then even my wife says, me. Oh, yeah, I can see you. <laughs> yeah, sitting in the next room. Gosh, yeah, everybody knows that you're not sitting on my couch. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just remembered um, the um, um, one of the stories. Um, the Lynn Winter is here. One of the stories. Um, do you know the? Um, um, I love this story. Um, you know Gruffalo. Gruffalo. Ah, send me the heart. I love Gruffalo's story. Um, Gruffalo's child is not that bad, but I prefer the original to the second one. Yeah, I think uh, that Gruffalo, that little mouse, is so adorable, and then I am a big fan of that. <laughs> and then who, who was the author? I forgot. Um, she, um, because of, you know, um, you know, if you have a child, you, know, you will understand that. So, um, yeah, but I didn't particularly like um, the other, um, you know, stories, to be fair. Um, I don't know why, maybe just the Gruffalo story was so big hit, and then um, it was just shockingly good, and then I'm a big fan. Maybe that's because of why I didn't actually have a, yeah, have a chance to actually see what's actually in there. Yeah, Julie Donaldson. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Yeah, so, but the Julia, um, that Donaldson's uh, another story. I think it, it is um, the story of a, um, a lady um, who actually um, went to see a wise old man. Wise old man. Don't, don't you do do do. There is a song I, which I could remember, but the story is very simple. The, <laughs> the lady, the old lady, went to see a wise old man, wise old man, and then she was complaining about the size of her house, her room. So she said, "Well, my house, for example, my room is too small. Yeah, my room is too small. What can I do? Help me." Help me, wise old man, help me. And then the wise old man's, um, you know, um, suggestion was very funny. Um, you know, okay, why don't you take an animal, let's say a cow? Yeah. So she took it in and then she was complaining. Oh, there was a tiny house, but with this cow in it, it's a squeeze. She wasn't very happy. And as she went there, again, she asked the question, what can I do? It's, it's getting worse. And then he said, oh, in that case, take some more, um, you know, the more animals. Why don't you take a pig? And then she ended up having nearly all the animals around her. And then she was actually squeezing the tiny... Well, you can imagine that, you know, the children's book. You know, she's, she's sitting there and like that. And then there was a chickens all over the place. And then, you know, everything was completely messy. 
and then she was about to cry. And she was actually crying. And then she went to see the wise old men again. What can I do now? And then, as you can imagine, the wise old men finally say, Yes, squash and squeeze. And then he said, Now take everything out. Ha! <laughs> wise old man indeed. And then she began to realize, Now. It was squeeze and scroll, I mean, you know, squash and squeeze, but now my, I feel my house is quite big. I think that is quite interesting thing. I don't know why, but when I was watching you just coming into this, my small room, our virtual space, I just suddenly remember that. If we have 25 or 26 people watching, um, you know, the live or possibly more in the future, in that case, what if, if we're all sitting here in a tiny room? It's going to be great fun. Forget about the social distancing, but you know, <laughs> I know we, um, yeah, we can't really go back to um, you know, the usual normality, of course, you know, unless we have a vaccine or something. But it's even thinking about, even imagining how we squeeze in there, put some chairs in everywhere, nowhere to go. And I think that is going to be a great fun and that I'm sure someone will complain about that you know oh gosh father Tony why don't you actually use a bigger rooms why don't you um, you know go to a you know church or parish hall even in the parish hall vicar's room or parish room will be bigger than this and that it's going to be much more comfortable than you know to be here and then I should say this well actually have you thought about the upper room that Jesus spent some time or Jesus' disciples were hiding? Yeah. I don't think, um, correct me, <laughs> correct me if you know better than me, but I, I never actually studied that, never actually got curious. Never had a curiosity on, on there, but you know, size of the opera room, maybe I think it might be very similar to this or slightly larger than this, maybe. Because nowadays, if we go to um, you know, the big halls or big um, you know, the structure, because we have um, you know, much strong materials to build with. In a building, um, you know, history, if you see, even the large buildings or even the great, um, you know, um, you know palaces, um, even churches, um, it was not that long since we have a large space. Do you see what I mean? Because people were able to build that building very high because they can actually have a thicker wall. Thick wall means you can actually make it much, much taller than usual. But still, if you have two walls, in between two walls, you have to put something. Yeah, you have to put something. And then that width of the room was defined by the length of usually timber. Of course, you know, nowadays, you know, the metal beams, the H shape, you can actually connect with them and then you can have a huge area tall not only the tall but also wide but if you go to for example let's see um you know um westminster abbey it is not that wide it is quite narrow but long do you see what i mean and even the same pools you have it is not just wide the square shape and then you have some limits in in the building and if you think about the Jesus time, I don't think people, <laughs> normal people, would actually live in a building where there is a huge and wide you know, space in their building. So the Jesus, the upper room, not the Jesus, the upper room must be quite tiny and narrow. And they didn't actually use much, you know, um, the timber in their ordinary people's, you know, in the house. So I'm sure Jesus' disciples' upper room must be a very similar to this or just a little bit larger than this. Not more than 
the size of even my living room. And if you see them being squashed in there, I think I cannot actually complain about the size of my living room or the study anymore. And I, I, th I don't know why. I don't know how I ended up being in that kind of, you know, um, the chain of random thoughts. But, you know, who cares? This is a thought for the night. Anything that we can think about, you know, for tonight, I think that's, that's okay. I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, and even if I'm just going everywhere, you know, from here to there, and then, oh, what is he talking about? You know, I'm sure you will understand that. It's Friday night. <laughs> but think about it. Let, let's think about, you know, the upper rooms. You know, is there anything that we feel difficult? We, well, I'm not normally, um, you know, I'm, I'm not usually a person who will actually complain much. Um... I think if there is something that I need to complain, probably I'll just say, oh, let's forget about that and then let, let's just, just move on. Let's carry on. The, um, uh, the most important thing is, you know, if I sit in, in the problem, probably, you know, the first thing that I actually try to grab it is, is a sense of, you know, positive, you know, um, thinking. And then what happened before is it just, it just passed. The past is past. We can't actually do anything about what already ha happened. So my intention is, okay, then... What's the best? What can I do? So that is only, um, that is usually me. So I'm not usually complaining, but, yeah, but we are all human beings. So we sometimes um, have um, you know, a couple of things that worries me or um, things already happened. We know that we can't change. We can't actually go back there. But, you know, things that bothers us, things that bother me or you. I think if there is anything, you know, like that, I think we need to actually, you know, make some comparison <laughs> in between our life and then the life of Jesus' disciples who were squeezed and squashed in that upper room. <laughs> but I think um, the amazing thing is when Jesus appeared, that upper room, and now I know, my brothers and sisters, we, we will have by now, I, because I do have a different feeling, different feel um, towards the upper room. The upper room was not great, it's just a tiny. When Jesus appeared to them in that upper room, amazingly what he said was, peace be with you. Yeah. How are you? He didn't say that. He said, peace be with you. And he knew that it was peace that his disciples would need it at most at that time. Peace. And I'm sure in our hearts, in our own hearts, probably the same peace is the thing that we need most. It is not because of the corona pandemic, don't get me wrong. <laughs> There's an extra, you know, um, you know, aspect, extra things. But I think even if without, you know, corona pandemic, even before we think about, you know, pandemic or whatever, I think we naturally drawn into the difficulties because you're a human being. And I think we need peace. I think... Um, Thinking about all this, you know, um, talking about that peace. I think that is a, is a wonderful thing. When we say, when you say, I don't know about you. When I say, um, God bless you. Yes, yes, Mustafa, God bless you. Or, you know, um, Jenny, God bless you. Stephen, God bless you. Um, if you wanted to have a, some sort of, you know, the blessing that is linked with, um, let's say, you being always lucky or, or happy. <laughs> I'm not saying, I didn't mean that, I never actually say blessing in that way, but you know, but whenever I say personally, because every single, you know, the person, every one of us, we're different, but when I say, God bless you, is, is I don't know why, but I think in my blessing, um, understanding about the blessing is more like that peace still. The calmness um, 
of our heart. In a gentle presence of God. And then sometimes um, the lovely touch. Yeah, you know that. If you feel the presence of God in your heart, it is not just more than you being feel happy or feel you know, protected. It's more than that. And then if you feel sick and then difficult, and if you struggle, and then you may feel a touch of healing. And if you're despair, and then if you're just really down, you may feel a touch of encouragement, maybe. If you lost the hope or anything, you may have the sense of hope. I think that is a blessing. And then therefore the blessing is what makes us from normal people to um, very strange people. <laughs> so, um, I think um, already um, spent um, you know, 10 to 15 minutes um, talking about Stranger Things. So, Julia Donaldson's story. Yeah, um, I love um, the Gruffalo. So for those who don't know Gruffalo, um, yeah, because you don't have any child yet, oh, you will learn. I love Gruffalo. So today, Friday, um, to end this week, we've been ups and downs, and then yesterday, but last couple of days, I think I, I don't know why. It is not the digital fatigue. Um, it's not the digital fatigue at all. But I think that I, I think that I was a bit tired both mentally and physically, because mentally and then to my physical you know, level was affected. So um, even yesterday, last night, I missed, I missed the um, um, you know, thoughts for the night. So I